guys, welcome to the Meta Meltdown episode 3. Today is Wednesday, June 1st, 2016. The Meta Meltdown is a weekly 20-minute podcast about the current meta in Hearthstone. Each week we'll focus on a specific deck, and this week we're focusing on Nazoth Priest. And we'll provide you on our insights on how to pilot the, pilot the deck in order to succeed on the ladder. My name is Dominic Silver Dragon Nguyen, aka Silver Dragon with two Ds and no O. I have here my co-host Nate Walter, aka Nate Diggity. How's it going, bro? It's going great, dude. Just ready to talk about some Nazoth Priest and about the uh, newest meta report that came out. It's pretty exciting. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you for asking, man. Uh, first of all, we'd like to apologize for our week-long absence from the show. We've made some big improvements. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you're looking at our new logo right above Nate, and you're looking at our new overlay, so we're really excited about this. And t -t 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 Nate, we have an exciting announcement at the end of the show. So we do. So stay can't tuned. wait to show you that. Let's start off with uh, the breakdown for this week's episode. We're going to go through our personal Hearthstone news. Then we're going to go into a meta report. And then we'll talk about uh, Nazoth Priest. Sound good to you? Perfect. Let's do it. Sounds good. So what decks did you play this week, Nate? I played Nazoth Priest, obviously. Mm hmm uh, I played some Reno Lock. It actually helped me get the Legend this month, so it's a pretty good deck. And then also Elise Warrior, because that is my go-to stable deck. Sounds good. How about yourself? I just played the Nazoth Priest uh, since Overwatch came out, so apologies. But I did play the Nazoth Priest a lot, so I'm ready to talk about that. And speaking of Overwatch, uh, let's talk about our out-of-game activities. So for me, uh, Overwatch was released, and I actually planned a huge gathering uh, for the release of the event. Uh, 450 people came, and it was just a really good time down in Fullerton. What about you, Nate? Uh, I hit Legend, as I mentioned, and then Overwatch. <laughs> yes, we're going to change it's, this uh, to it's digital Overwatch. crack. So there's, <laughs> there's other games out there besides Hearthstone, but it's not quite as good, but it, it's, it's pretty close. Yeah, no, I agree. It's definitely uh, a lot of the new factor of, you know, Overwatch, so that's why we're playing that. But nevertheless, we're here to bring you uh, Nazoth Priest. And, of course, with Nazoth Priest, we have to talk about its matchups, um, specifically Tier 1 and Tier 2 decks. So, Nate, uh, we have the new Temple Storm meta report. Would you like to go through that? Yes, sir. So, Tier 1, we have at number 1, Midrange Shaman. Surprise, surprise. Number two, Zulok, another shocker, and three, Temple Warrior. Nice. Can't believe it. I know. Two <laughs> of our past decks are in Tier 1, so that's really, really good. All right, so Tier 2, coming in number four, number five, we have Agro Shaman, and number five is Patron Warrior. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about these decks? Do you agree, disagree? I think they're really indicative of how much time players have really taken to iterate on Shaman, Zulog, Temple Warrior. Those decks are have been iterated on since the beginning of Whispers of the Old Gods, and that's why they're doing so well. Um, they're also really aggressive, so that's why they're you know doing so well. Um, in the Tier 2, I think while we have Agro Shaman and Patron Warrior, those have been a little less um, consistent. Um, different decks have been playing with those, so I, I, I do agree. I agree that Tier 1 has definitely been um, terrorizing not only Legend Ladder, but, you know, the regular Pleb Ladder as well. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think anyone can really disagree with Tier 1 right now. Those three decks, Midrange, Shaman, Zulak, and Temple Warrior, are just mm -hmm. everywhere. That's all you're pretty much seeing. So definitely spot on. Four and five, Agro Shaman has been good for the last at least year. Yep. Um, or we'll say a year in November when uh, League of Explorers came out at least. Right. And then Patron Warrior is just always good against those fast decks, so it, it makes perfectly good sense. And then for those wondering, uh, Nazoth Priest actually is ranked in Tier 3 according to Temple Storm, but um, as we get into the matchups here, Nazoth Priest uh, does very well, depending on the archetype that you're playing. I play a little bit more anti-aggro, mm -hmm. and Dominic played a little bit more control type, but yep. the anti-aggro definitely does very well against anti-aggro. Uh, shocker, uh, like mid-range shaman, Zulok, Temple Warrior, Agro Shaman. So we'll get into that here shortly. Yep, sounds good. So let's talk about um, what cards are in each person's deck list. So I'm actually running the Tic Tacs uh, Nazoth Priest, as you'll see to our left. But um, I'm running 
two circle of healings, two forbidden shapings, two flash heals, one embrace the shadow, two shadow word pain, two doomsayer, two museum curator, two shadow word death, one shadow madness, two organized soul priest, two shifting shades, uh, two excavated evils, one Harrison Jones, two entombs, two cabal shadow priest, one just got true heart, and one Sylvanas, and the, of course the kicker, uh, one Nazoth the corruptor. Uh, and here we have uh, Nate's deck as well. It's a little bit uh, more anti-aggro. Do you want to go through that one? Uh, yeah, definitely. So in uh, the deck that I was playing, two Circle of Healings, two Power Word Shields, two Northshire Clerics, two Shadow Word Pains, one Acidic Swamp Ooze, museum, one Museum Curator, two Wild Pyromancers, two Shadow Word Death, two Akanai Sulpreet, two Shifting Shades, two Excavated Eagle. I said it again, <laughs> Eagles. Uh, two Excavated Evils. Uh, one Holy Nova, two Darkshire Alchemist, one Harrison Jones, one Entomb, one Cabal Shadow Priest, one Karen Bloodhoof, one Jessica Trueheart, one Sylvanas Windrunner, and one Nazoth the Corrupter. Sounds good. Yeah, these are definitely two solid decks. Uh, Tic Tacs, the one on the left here, it actually was number one legend uh, in EU for a while, so mm -hmm. very solid. And then I also did pretty well with the one on the right. I got to about um, rank 120 at one point. Mm -hmm. this last month with it, uh, Legends. So uh, they, they both do well. Like I said, one is more control style, so if you're getting a lot of control matchups, I would definitely recommend Tic Tacs. And then if you're seeing you know Tier 1 decks like Zulok and uh, Agro Shaman Temple Warrior, I would you know give my uh, archetype uh, a chance. Yep, definitely. Sounds good. Um, regardless of uh, whether you build the deck uh, Tic Tacs way or Nate's way, um, let's talk about matchups. So you've already mentioned that uh, Shaman, Zulok, Temple Warrior, Hunters are really good matchups for this deck, especially yours. Um, what do you think is a bad matchup for this deck? Yeah, so uh, the bad matchup would definitely be uh, Cthulhu Druid, just those four attack minions. It's pretty much impossible to clear, especially when you're facing uh, four tens and uh, yeah. four sixes, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So pretty frustrating. Uh, Control Warrior is also a hard one for Nazoth Priest. You definitely have to flood the board as much as possible early on. Try to get your opponent to use both of his Brawls right off the bat. Otherwise, if you if he uses Brawl on Nazoth the Corruptor when you play it, you pretty much uh, just wasted your win condition. Mm -hmm. So it's important to get the Control Warrior to use that early on. Uh, Control Priest, just mere matchup, so I guess that one's not entirely relevant. Freeze Mage is very hard. And then also Miracle Rogue. Any type of like OTK style deck can definitely be difficult. I would also add Renal Lock to this. So basically anything that can deal, we'll say, 20 plus damage in a turn is right. certainly dangerous for the Priest. Sounds good. So speaking of matchups, we can actually talk about our win ratios now that we have them. Um, unfortunately for me, I played on the laptop and my phone for the most part in these past two weeks, so I don't actually have stats. However, I'll start to track my stats for the next week, um, and we'll see how we do there. Uh, thankfully, Nate did include, uh, did in fact uh, have his own ratios, so do you want to talk about those real quick? Yeah, I'll just run through them real quickly here. So in the last week or so, um, I had about a 55% win rate. So uh, against Warlock, I was 4-0, though it was all Zulok, so mm -hmm. it's pretty easily... Uh, handled. Priest was two and one. Mage, I was two and one. Mm -hmm. Hunter, three and two. Uh, Shaman was four and four. I want to say that was like the Totem Shaman. It's a very sort of difficult matchup if they keep um, putting out more, more and more Totems on the board. You start to run out of clears eventually if mm -hmm. you can't, you know, gain the initiative and put something on the board yourself. So that can be tough. Uh, Rogue, like I mentioned, Miracle Rogue is a hard matchup. I went three and three. Uh, Paladin one and one, and then Warrior was one and four. But I'm fairly certain uh, the only win was against Temple Warrior, and the other four losses were against Control Warrior. Makes sense. Yeah, and then I actually didn't play any Druids, so lucky me. I know I played so many Druids; it was not even funny. I was so frustrated <laughs> with the four attack minions, but alas, we're good. You got them all, not me. Yeah, exactly. I took all your bad luck. It's all good though. No worries. All right, so. Uh, now that we've talked about matchups and stuff like that, uh, let's talk about cards that stick out to us. Um, in particular, uh, Tic Tac's deck runs two Forbidden Shapings. Um, I really, really enjoy Forbidden Shaping. Um, that's why I run it so much. It's a really fun card, in my opinion. 
It really helps out with the curve. Um, if I don't have um, anything to play, it has a lot of AOE in that deck. So sometimes there's nothing on the board and you really need to play something. Forbidden Shaping is completely useful in that regard. And I also want to talk about, um, in particular, um, when you get to 10 mana, you should be using your hero power and um, and then using Forbidden Shaping. Because for the 8 drops, there's actually 11 possible 8 drops. And I would say more than half of them, mostly of uh, most of them actually, are really, really good things you want on the board. There's Alakir, Gromish, um, both Ragnaroses, Tyrion, Ronin even, um, and the only couple bad ones I would say are Boogie Monster and um, that's basically it. Even if you get like Devil Soar or Giant Sandworm, you're not too unhappy. Those are 8-8s. Eight eight and the Eldritch Horror is a 6-10. So you're not really sad. You won't really be really sad unless you get the Boogie Monster. And even then, if it kills something, it's a uh, Eight nine, so yeah, definitely. And I think your math was a little bit off. I I want to say there's like thirteen or fourteen eight drops, but still, it's, oh, it's yeah. at least like seventy five percent of the time. It's mm -hmm. you're gonna get Something a good card. So yep, definitely. Uh, ten, if you do use it on ten, it's not terrible. You're gonna get either the death wings or you can get Barry and Rin. So you're spending ten mana for a seven seven. So I'd say it's about sixty six percent of the time you're gonna get uh, a twelve twelve. Yeah. So it's Either way, whatever you're looking to get, you know, certainly try and um, spend your mana beforehand. Like if you want to get 8-8 uh, eight, eight Ragnaros the Light Lord and heal yourself for 8, mm -hmm. you know, definitely heal first and then spend the remaining 8 and try and get that Ragnaros. Yeah, I would definitely say use it on 8 since um, you can actually get the old gods. Uh, so you can get a 6-6 six, six Cthune, you can get Nazoth, uh, Yogstron, and the battle cries don't go off. So definitely, definitely try to use it on 8. I feel True, like. I forgot about those. No worries, all Which good. Strikes the old gods sneaking in there. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so are there any other cards you want to talk about, Nate? Yeah, in Tic Tac's deck, I did like the Embrace to Shadow tech mm -hmm. card. So using Circle of Healings in tech, Tic Tac's deck, they're only used for board clear as there's no uh, Injured Blade Master being run in Priest really anymore. Mm -hmm. Um... So yeah, it just gives you another out to deal four damage, and then you can also only have to spend uh, two mana rather than four for a board clear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I do like that tech, and then I really like the Excavated Evils over Holy Novas, just due to the extra damage, and against Shaman, it's really good yep. for the Frost Wolves and Tunnel Trucks. And uh, the last card we want to talk about is Shadow Madness. I only run, or Tic Tac only runs one, and I really, really like the card. It's uh, really a way for me to control the board, especially on turn four. Um, taking one of their cards and running it into another aggro deck is really ridiculous. And uh, in particular, I had super fun with it when I stole a Dreadsteed and killed it off. Then oh, I just man. kept summoning Dreadsteeds, and that was like really, really fun. Um, one thing I did learn. Uh, one thing I did learn about the Dreadsteed, however, is that when you kill, uh, Ernazoth actually summons the last six dead cards. So if the last six cards are dead steeds and not Sylvanus, uh, Sylvanus, then you'll summon six dead steeds and not Sylvanus. But at that point, I just won the game, so that was still <laughs> really fun. Oh man, yeah, that's a very good point you bring up. I've I've actually done that to myself where. I play so many death rattle cards, and then I think I'm gonna get, you know, like a Sylvanas if I played it first, and then I end up just um, not doing it because I played, you know, six other death rattles after her. Mm -hmm. So definitely uh, something to keep in mind. So good point. Yeah, and actually, let's just talk about uh, one last card, uh, Wild Pyromancer. You, in particular, uh, in particular, Nate, love this card. Do you want to talk about why? Yeah, I. I like to run it over Doomsayer in my decks, uh, just because uh, if you do draw like a Doomsayer and they have something on the board, it can be a dead card. Mm -hmm. Where if you draw Wild Pyromancer and you have a couple spells in your hand, it can just be another board clear for you. So they're definitely they each have their their moments. Doomsayer is extremely good early on, you know, turn two, um, but after that, it, it can, like I said, just be a dead card. So it's it's fifty fifty. It's just personal preference, and I prefer Wild Pyromancer. Sounds good to me. And uh, barring all of that, let's finally talk about starting hands. So the mulligan is really important in Hearthstone. Um, it really dictates the next four or five turns in your game. So let's first talk about aggro. Yeah, you want to take that away? Sure. So just talking strictly about Tic Tac's number one deck here, 
Uh, against aggro, you're going to want to look for your circle of healing. Uh, embrace the shadow because of circle of healing, of course. Yep. Shadow word pain, doomsayer, a museum curator, organized soul priest, uh, just another activator for circle of healing. Mm -hmm. And then excavated evil, as I mentioned, especially good against shaman. So those are the cards I generally look for. What would you say we look for in a more control style matchup, Dom? Um, so you're always going to be looking for that museum curator. Um, it's the priest premiere to drop, of course. It's really, really good, and it really enables the Nazoth to go off. Um, besides that, you're also looking for just a card True Heart. Um, it's only a one of in the deck, so I wouldn't look too hard, but it definitely helps out a lot against the control matchups. Um, you're also looking for Shifting Shades and Tombs, uh, and of course the Akanai Circle combo. Um, of course, uh, because it's control, and if it's heavy control, um, you're a little bit, uh, you can be a little bit more greedy, I suppose, since um, for the first, like, two, three turns, you're basically, uh, you know, just passing the turn, unless you have that museum curator, and that's why you're looking so hard for that. But yeah. Yeah, one other card I just wanted to mention, it, it's definitely a tech card against mm -hmm. aggro or control, it, it would work fine. If you're facing shaman or warrior, you definitely want to hang on to your Harrison Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, against shaman, it's pretty sick if they lay down their Doom Hammer, punch you twice, and then the next turn you draw six cards for five mana. Plus, you get a five four on the board. So definitely, uh, definitely, it can be a win condition. So something to look Sounds out for. Sounds good. Yep, and that about brings us to our end. Sadly, um, you can find this deck list and any of our previous shows at metameltdown.com. You can also find us on Twitter at the Meta Meltdown, YouTube at Meta Meltdown, and our email is metameltdownpodcast at gmail.com. Please let us know if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns. Uh, we'd love to hear them and address them, of course. And next week, we're going to look at Zulok! Yes! This cancerous deck that I actually, actually got so close to Legend with. So I'm excited to tackle this again and see how well I do. But um, yeah. And uh, Nate, you want to tell them our exciting announcement? Uh, yes, of course. So next week, starting 7 p.m. every Wednesday, we will be streaming the show live on Twitch. So tune in live. Uh, come join us in the chat room. Let us know if you have any questions. You can mm -hmm. chat with us. So it'll be a good time. Come hang out. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. And I'm more excited about the Zulog and playing Overwatch. But I mean, like, Zulog, though. Yeah. Sounds good. So thank you, everyone, for listening. We really appreciate it. Um, we'll be back next Wednesday, again, at 7 o'clock on Twitch. Anything else you want to say, Nate? Uh, that's it. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and have a good week, Dan. See you yep. next week. See you next week. Bye, guys.